In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your images pop using Capture One. Now, the term pop means different things to different people. For me, it comes down to three things. It comes down to exposure, it comes down to contrast, and it comes down to saturation. And we're going to be applying all of these adjustments on a global level, which is usually where you start. I will show you in another video how you can isolate something like a color range or your subject. This is usually the starting point, so we're gonna dig in. By the way, this is also a multi-part series that I'm doing on Capture One. If you do not have a copy of Capture One, I will put a link in the show description. You can download it for free. It's a 30 day trial and you can work along and see if it's right for you. I think you're really going to love it. And special thanks to Capture One for making all of this possible. So without further ado, let's get started. We're going to use this as our example image because we have a range of colors here. And I want to talk about just some sliders here. So exposure should be fairly obvious. And this image actually is fairly well exposed. But if it weren't, we could use that to brighten or darken the actual overall exposure. This is different than brightness. If I add brightness to an image, if you look at the histogram here let me show you a difference here let's go back reset that if I turn the exposure up you're going to see that I start to clip my highlights so it really is the overall exposure of the image I'm going to reset that the brightness slider is actually different because it is tending to work within the range of light that we have in the image so if I turn this up and you watch the histogram you're going to notice that you can get some clipping but it's much more protected than using exposure so that's kind of the difference between these two and it's nice to find a balance because some images you might have a good exposure with but you want it to be just a little bit brighter but you don't want to do it with increasing the exposure because that blows things out so that's when you would go to the brightness slider and these also work the other direction as well I'm gonna reset that for a second we have two more sliders contrast and saturation contrast will affect the overall balance of lights and darks in the image and sometimes if you have an image that needs work on this I'll pull it all the way to the left here you can see that it's kind of washed out everything's more even and as I move this to the right you're going to notice that we have much more separation between between lights and darks and you can blow that out to a point where it's really crushing the dark areas of your image and really making the light areas light so contrast is a really just the overall balance of light and dark tones now another thing that I want to show you in here is that when we increase contrast let's do before and after here I'm also going to increase a little bit of saturation. So watch as I move this slider up, like those reds, they become a little more intense, a little bit more bold. Now this is a subtle effect. It's not quite as extreme as moving the saturation slider over. It's probably more like vibrance and that's what you're gonna add to the image. So just know this, that if you're the kind of person who likes to come in and really make the colors pop and sing, the contrast slider kind of does that. So this is a little bit of a two in one and that's just kind of the effect that you get when you increase contrast in an image. Another thing I wanna show you real quick is I'm doing a lot of before and after and I want to show you a really quick shortcut on how you can do that because this is a really good way to work if you want to compare the edits that you've made to the original image. So if you look at the top of the interface in Capture One, there's an arrow here that slings over to the left and hits this line or this wall. That is the master adjustment reset switch. So if I click on that, it's going to reset everything to the default image as it was brought in from the raw file. Let's undo that. If you want to just do a quick before and after, what I'm going to do is on the keyboard, I'm going to hold down the option key or alt on a PC and as long as you're holding that key down you can use this to toggle views between original and then the edits that you made so this is very useful I'll show you something else that's really cool I'm gonna reset this and let's go ahead and let's maybe bring the saturation way up and here let's just do something extreme for our example here I'm gonna blow out this image right and so let's say that I'm adding curves to this later and I'm going to drop my curves down and I want to see how that affected the image this is so heavy-handed it's ridiculous but you're gonna get my point here so on each one of these tools here you're going to see the same little arrow or the reset button and so that button will just reset what is on this tool here I can also use this to toggle if I hold down the option key or alt on a PC as long as I'm holding that down I can select that button to reset and it's temporary as soon as I release it it goes back but it only made the changes that had done that tool remember we blew our exposure way out over here and so when I toggle back and forth it's just toggling the adjustment that I just made so that's something that's very useful as well now another thing that I want to show you that is very cool about all of these adjustments I have a whole video where I talked about essential editing tools and so if you don't know how to use the curves adjustment tool or if you don't know how to use the levels adjustment tool I have did a whole video explaining that I will link that up here you might want to refer to that but if you do I want to show you this because it's really pretty cool if I do something crazy like on the levels tool I'm going to bring my highlights and blow them way out here. So look, we're losing all kinds of detail. This looks terrible, right? Now, 
I've blown my highlights on the levels adjustment. I'm going to grab the curves tool and I'm going to take my highlights and I'm going to bring them down. And you can see that they're not gone. We kind of have something that's really close. Let's toggle here to the original image. So before and after, you can see it's pretty much exactly the same. So the reason I'm showing you this is because adjustments that you do in one tool are not necessarily destructive to the tools around it. So if you're used to using something like Photoshop, which is layer based, and by default, you're going to stack layers on top of one another. So if you do something with a levels adjustment that blows out all the highlights, you're probably not going to be able to bring them back with a curves adjustment. Now, Photoshop has evolved and you can do it to where it only affects layers below the specific adjustment that's more advanced. But what I love about Capture One is that everything works in a nodal type setup where you can basically cancel out something you did with another tool. Now, I want to tell you that because it's really easy to start getting complex if you're just working through tools. And so let's say you add contrast using the contrast slider and you kind of think it's too intense, but you use the level slider to pull back on that. It won't be destructive to your final image and it's going to maintain a level of quality of your image throughout the entire editing process. But the only thing to watch out for is it does make it complicated when you're trying to figure out how you did something or how you're trying to undo something. So my advice is just to keep this as simple as possible. And we've talked about this on the other video, but there are multiple ways to do the same thing. The curves adjustment slider, excuse me, the, the contrast slider will give you more contrast to your image. You just don't have a lot of control over it. So that's where using levels or curves might be a way to um, get more control over the overall look of your image. I want to show you real quick. Let's back up here. I'm going to show you three different ways we can add contrast. We can use the contrast slider, which I'm not a huge fan of on this image because it just kind of makes it too dark too quick. So let's reset that. If I use the levels adjustment, I can adjust where my midtones are going to be and I can bring those down, but I can also adjust where the darks, the shadows, and the highlights fall. So whereas it was too dark with the contrast slider, I can create contrast here and I have a little more control. Now it's using an algorithm to bridge all these areas together, which is fine. It looks pretty good. If you want the ultimate control, I'm going to reset that. We go down to the curves layer. And if you don't know how to make an S curve, I'm going to show you. What you're going to do is you see this line that runs diagonally and I can place, if I click on that line, I can place points on that line. And what I want to do is I'm going to place two points on the line to divide it by three here. And don't worry about being exact with this because you're actually going to move them around. To create contrast, what we're going to do is we're going to raise the high midtones here just a little bit, and we're going to lower the dark midtones here. And you can see that the image starts to really quickly become very contrasty. I can also raise where this happens in the image. So if we want contrast, but we want a brighter image, I could bring it up, or we could do the same, or sorry, we could do the opposite, as I make a mistake there, and bring it down. So this is typically what's referred to as an S curve because it sort of resembles the letter S. If you move it in this direction, it will add contrast. If you want to take away contrast, let's say your image is too contrasty, you do the opposite. You bring up the low midtones and you bring down the low highlights, and that's going to give you a more washed out look on your image. That's how you control contrast in the curves adjustment layer. So check out that other video if any of that seemed confusing, but this is a really finite way to work and a really cool way to get a lot of control over your image. Now, I want to show you another image. I'm going to, we won't bother reset that. Let's go over to this one. This is a portrait of this woman here. This image is overexposed. This was shot on a Sony A7R 3 earlier this year. This was on the press trip we did for the 135 millimeter G Master F 1.8 lens, which is a very, very sharp lens, which I'm going to show you something about in a second here. But this is overexposed. A tool that will help you in a major way is up here at the top of the screen here, at the top of the interface. You see this little triangle with the warning? This is the show exposure warning. Now, when I click this, it's going to turn red everything that is starting to clip in my highlights. So let's press that and you're going to see, yeah, she turns pretty red here. In other words, these tones are getting so bright that I don't have any texture. I don't have any detail in them and that's not something you want. So you can use this tool. I'm going to leave it on and the obvious thing to do would be to take your exposure slider and start bringing that back and you're going to see it starts to go away. And now we have a much better exposed image and we're talking about making images pop. That is one step to do it because before, let's do a quick before and after, that doesn't pop, that just washes 
washes out, right? So we want a lower exposure. Another important thing to understand is that this is a raw file that was shot in camera. If you're using JPEG files, you probably won't recover that detail. In fact, I can guarantee you, you won't recover that detail because we're just using raw data. A JPEG is kind of set in stone. So once details are blown out or they're clipped in the highlights, you won't get them back. And then in the shadows, it's harder. You might be able to pull a little bit out, but noise tends to hide in shadows. So you introduce another problem to your image. So that's one reason I would recommend you always work in raw file formats. So anyway, next thing I want to do here is we have lowered the exposure. And this woman is fairly fair skin. Let's bring her in, zoom in a little bit. And what I wanna do is just add a little bit of color and a little bit of warmth to the skin tones. So we're just gonna bring the saturation slider up just a little bit. Now, I would say be very careful with this. Let's take it all the way up because you can see what I'm talking about. It looks like she's got a spray tan and candy lipstick on. And you don't want that, it's just too much. So a little bit goes a long way. And it's also important to remember in terms of saturation that contrast and saturation affect one another. And this image is fairly contrasty, even though I didn't add any to it. So I think just adding a little bit of saturation kind of achieves the effect I'm looking for. So what I'm gonna do is a quick before and after here. There's before where it was blown out, a little washed out, and after, and we're making it really start to pop a little bit, and we're making a much better image. We can go in and select colors, and I'll show you how to do that in a separate video if we wanna intensify the look in her eyes or even change that hue a little bit, make it darker. But we're on track. Now we have a pretty good balance of exposure. We brought that back from those clipped highlights so nothing's too bright in the image. Contrast, we didn't have to do too much with this image because it was kind of already pretty set. And then I did add just a little bit of saturation just to make her skin tones just a little bit warmer. At this point, I feel like we've got a really good base model to work with, but I want to work on it a little more because this is where I think you can start to take interpretation in a few different ways depending on what you want to do with this image. So for me personally, I like this, but I feel like our subject is just too bright. This is just kind of... I I don't know, this is too conventional of an image for me. So what I would like to do is just bring this down just a little bit so it's a little bit darker and a little less obvious. There's two ways you could do that. I might take my brightness slider, and remember brightness is just going to affect how exposure, sorry, it's going to affect the brightness within the limits of your exposure. So if I bring this down, we could go for a really moody look to it. Let's bring it down there. So she kind of starts to fade back into the background just a little bit. That's kind of a cool look, or I could also do that with, uh, let's set that back to zero. I could also do that by just bringing the curves and bringing my midtones down. That kind of has a similar effect of just working within the exposure. It gives you a little more control because I can kind of control where that curve lies, but we can start to get a little more mood introduced to our image that I really like on this. It also brought down some of this distraction in the back, which I'm really not a big fan of. It was just there. Anyway, you can also do the opposite. I could bring this up if I wanted to brighten her a little bit more without necessarily clipping. And again, I would want to check over here with my exposure. Yep, we're still pretty good. The only clipping is kind of right here on various parts of her face. So you might want to pay attention to that. You're just going to lose detail in there. But anyway, these are some different things that we can start doing to this image to interpret it. And once again, I like to start with exposure. I like to make sure my contrast is fairly decent to where I want it. And then I typically will use brightness and saturation to start interpreting the image a little bit. You know, another look you could go for completely is to kind of start to desaturate this to where it's not black and white, but you know, this gives it kind of a modern look that you see a lot in magazines now that, you know, you just don't have a whole lot of color in here. It just depends on what you're going for and what you like and what you like to see. Kind of like that darker. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of fading that out. Now, another thing that I want to show you here is let's say we are very happy with this edit. Sorry, I like the saturation. Let's bring it back. We are very happy with this edit and I want to apply this to other images. You can see over here in my strip here, I've got two other images. One of them is a, kind of an outtake. The other one is just not so great. Um, let's say they're both great, right? So I want to copy all of the adjustments that I just made and I want to paste them from this image to this image. A lot of people ask me this question. Sometimes it's obvious, sometimes it's not. There's a tool for for that. It is this upward pointing arrow on your toolbar up here. You can also use the letter A on your keyboard to select that whichever you like. And so there are two functions this tool. In fact, if I just click and hold on that, you're going to see that you get a down arrow for apply adjustments. So we can copy and we can also apply. First thing we want to do is copy. I'm going to select up here, this darker image is the one we want to copy. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the option key once again on the keyboard. 
look, that turns into a downward arrow and I can paste it onto this image, which looks pretty good. That was like, you know, no effort at all because it's pretty much the same exposure as this other image. Now I have two takes. I'm gonna undo that for just a second because I want you to see how you can do multiple images. Let's say that we have an entire session of images with this same model and we want to globally apply all of those adjustments over to the other images. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. What we're gonna do is two things. You're going to select the image here. Um, actually, what we're gonna do is select the two that I wanna apply it to. Select all of the images that we're going to copy to, and there are two arrows up here, and you want to also see this icon for the stack. What this stack does is if you hover over it, it toggles between edit primary and edit selected variants. And so I want to actually copy from this image and I want to paste to both of these. So you make sure that is selected, otherwise you can only do one at a time. So once that's lit up, I'm going to select the A tool, or sorry, the, the arrow tool, hit the letter A on the keyboard. I'm going to copy from the first image. Now, what I'm gonna do is go up to the top here on the far right, we have these two selected, we have the stack selected, I'm gonna push the down arrow and voila, we have applied them to multiple images. You can do that with you know as many as you need to. There could be 30 images in here and you can do them all at once. Super handy, big time saver, and that is how you cut and paste global image edits across multiple images. So it's very handy to know how to do. If you haven't tried Capture One yet, I highly recommend it. I will put a link in the description. You can download a free 30 day trial, put some of your own images in here and try it for yourself. A lot of people feel overwhelmed the first time they open Capture One. And if you understand the concepts of what these tools do, it's really quite simple. It's just different options for arriving at the same conclusion depending on how much control you want to have over it. And I think that's where the power of Capture One is. You can keep things simple or you can dive deep and make them complex. If you're still kind of daunted by the interface here, I have a video to refer everyone to. I'll link it up at the end of this video. Uh, that's just kind of an overview of the interface and where things are. And this is a whole series that I'm doing, so we're going to add to this. I'm going to show you specific things, and we'll get more complex as we go. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.